Rob Newton Resource Hour. Like it on Facebook. Put your questions on there. We'll deliver them to Dr. David Klein. But an awful lot of people who listen to this radio station and who live in this area are always concerned about osteoporosis. And you turn on the TV at night and in the afternoon, and all you see besides the testosterone ads is these osteoporosis ads. And they're always pitching some kind of chemical, some kind of thing, and then they end the commercial with 10 seconds of very fast-paced language about this could give you this, this could give you that, we don't know if it can do this, it might do that, and we're not sure. But, uh, Dr. Nutraceuticals for Osteoporosis? Absolutely. Okay, it works something like this. You know, when you're a teenager, you're eating, you know, you tend to eat garbage. You tend to eat very, very badly, yet you grow. Your height goes up, the bones become more dense, you're more athletic, more resilient. When you do break something, it heals very quickly. And then as you age, these things seem to diminish, but you get smarter. So you eat better, the food's improved, you're taking those extra calcium tablets and capsules, yet you develop osteoporosis. Osteopenia first, that's the good news. Osteoporosis to follows. Gee, that just means it got worse instead of better. Well, why? What is it that you're missing? Why is it that you're eating better, you're eating more, you're dumping the calcium down the hatch, yet your bones are still melting away? Well, it goes something like this. Maybe you're looking at the wrong thing. Okay, maybe it's not a matter of calcium at all. Maybe the fact that you're taking in five to six times as much calcium as you ever did, and still you're developing osteopenia, maybe you're looking at exactly the wrong thing. Well, what is it that, that it takes to maintain bone strength? Now, bone isn't simply inorganic calcium in a crystal. It's a, it's a complex, very much alive tissue that turns over. It dies off, it gets recreated, it dies off, it gets recreated. It's kind of a, a recycling kind of an arrangement that your body does. When the doctor gives you the bisphonates like Boniva and Fosamax, it poisons half of that cycle. So you end up with, oh yeah, it'll slow down the breakdown, but you end up with brittle bones that uh, start to become problems for you. You'll increase in hip fracture, you'll start seeing problems with uh, mandibular uh, wasting and so on and so forth. Your teeth fall out with the bisphonates. So how do you do it naturally? Well, what you're missing isn't calcium at all. What you're missing is strontium. Now, those of you that are old enough to have osteoporosis or that are at risk for it at this time can remember strontium, radioactive strontium from the 1950s and 60s. Fallout, well, this is a naturally occurring mineral that finds its way into bone because bone is what needs it. When it's radioactive, you really don't want radioactive strontium. You want the good stuff. So how do you fight osteoporosis? By replacing strontium. The dosage, 2 to 400 milligrams once, twice a day, is sufficient for most individuals. A chelated strontium. In Europe, okay, they have something called strontium renolate. It's a prescription there. Here it's over the counter as strontium citrate. But what else do you need besides strontium? Well, of course, you need to make sure you have enough calcium in your diet, but there's something called vitamin K2. Not to be confused with vitamin K1 or K3, but vitamin K2. K2 combined with vitamin D3 and strontium will actually start to reverse the osteopenia development. You can start seeing improvements in your bone density by doing nothing more than K2, D3, and strontium. Now, it's a good idea to take your minerals. Why? Because you do need trace amounts of manganese, magnesium, and boron. But with a chelated mineral complex, K2, D3, strontium, you are good to go. So that being said, what are you, what in the world are you waiting for? There are no downsides for this, and none of this stuff is expensive. You need not spend a ton of money on this. Now, why is it that women develop osteoporosis before men do? And all men will develop osteoporosis if given enough time. It has to do with these estrogen issues. Guys, estrogen levels go up with age and women's drop. Okay, you have to have estrogen in order for the bone to be deposited. So guys are blessed with the estrogen and cursed with it at the same time, whereas women, you are out of luck. Okay, testosterone goes to zip, estrogen goes to zip, progesterone goes to zip, and you have a lot of organ systems going to, to heck in a handbasket all at the same time. For the common person, myself included, why does osteoporosis present itself with the person being almost bent over? Okay, well, if you, if you can imagine, okay, um, 
uh, what do they call it? The, the cinder block. Okay, cinder block is hollow. Okay, you have a backside and a front side. If you took away the front side and started to chisel it, your wall would start to fall towards you. When you have osteoporosis of the spine, it typically causes the, the wall to fall forward. You don't find that wall going backwards. You have f very few people end up with, the, with osteoporotic changes looking at the sky. Looking down, you bet. Where does this typically occur? It, it occurs at the mid-thoracic area. Okay, why? Well, there's a little artery there called the artery of Adam Kiewitz, uh, as if it really makes a difference. It, it, it feeds off at about T10, but as you get older, this arterial supply starts to diminish. It's also the area where the flexibility of the thoracic spine, which is very inflexible, and the lumbar area, which is, they come together. It's a weak area. And so when you flip forward, when you lean forward, when you look down, it puts pressure, it puts a stress on the anterior vertebrum. And when it starts to crunch, you develop what's called a, web, uh, a wedge fracture. Okay, you know, like any other wedge, it's got a tall side and a short side. The short side is in the front. You start leaning forward. Once that happens, it's all over Irene. So the trick to this is to get the bone density back. And what does it cost to do this? About 30, 35 bucks a month. It's not terribly expensive. Maybe a little bit more if you're older, because the older you are, the more of the stuff you need. Now, why? Why do we develop these uh, mineral deficiencies anyway? The, the question why is the thing that fascinates me most about medicine. Well, as you get older, your GI tract, your gastrointestinal tract becomes less and less able to extract these minerals from our diet. So when you're a kid, okay, it's just unfair. You know, that it's unfair that youth is wasted on the young. When you're young, you can extract the minerals easily. As you get older, it becomes harder and harder. So it takes more to be ingested to get just the right amount to keep out of trouble. So when you look at these numbers on these, on these vitamin bottles that say recommended daily allowance, okay, that is given a young person with a perfect GI tract and an athletic ability, and usually they're men in their 20s. Why? Because that was what was tested when they came up with them. But, you know, here's the news flash: You are not a 20-year-old male. So your needs are going to be multiples of those RDAs. All right, very good. Now, strontium was also suggested for me because I have implants. Yes. And as you age, and sometimes if those implants are driven into the bones in the face or in the gums, and those start to deteriorate with age, those out who out there who also have implants better start thinking about that. The uh, those, li those little stainless steel screws that are put in that hold the teeth in place, that hold the bones together in, in your case because of that fracture that you had in your face, the bone has to be strong enough to hold the threads of the screws. And if you've ever tried putting a screw into a piece of drywall that's wet or a piece of drywall that has moisture in it, it falls apart. The same thing is true of the bone. So when you put those implants in there, the bone has to be very, very hard for it to take. So one of the things that I suggest that people do before they have their hips done, before they have their shoulders and knees done, and certainly before they have dental implants, is to load up on K2, D3, and strontium to harden the bone so that it will accept this uh, intervention uh, safely and effectively. What is the timeline on that? If somebody's going to anticipate going to one of these dentists that says they're going to do a one-day implant procedure, is it two months before, three months before, and they should start the regimen? What's well, a brilliant question. Okay, it takes time for the bone to harden, minimum of six weeks. I really prefer more like 12 weeks. It gives, it gives, the, it gives the mineral enough chance to find its target and start the process. 12 weeks is, is, is probably about right. All right, time now to turn the show over to Robin. She is our official person to link you with the stages of life. If you'd like to see Dr. Klein, give the office a call at 407-679-3337. And if you'd like some more information, uh, visit our website at stagesoflife.net. Our office hours are Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5, and we're located in Longwood at 1917 Booth Circle. And we invite you to come in any time and visit our health store. Thank you so much. And again, we'll be talking to Dr. David Klein next week. We always have him three days a week, but lately we've been running him five days a week because the information is so good. Monday, Tuesday, or Monday and Tuesday now are the best of. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are all brand new.